We're good? Going? Okay, guys. Uh, today, I'm going to teach you everything you ever wanted to know about tempera paint. Tempera paint is what you're going to be using to do your paintings. And my students become incredible color mixers because you're only... my. I'm going to describe everything that's going on. I'm going to teach you how to manage your supplies. I'm going to teach you about the supplies. I'm going to teach you how to manage it. I'm going to teach you how to use it, and I'm going to teach you how to clean it up. And um, so, let's start by talking about the material that you're going to be using. I have two kinds of tempera in my class. I have cake tempras, which come in little hard cakes, and you use them kind of like watercolors. You dip your brush into the water, and you twirl it around, and you put those on your paper. Uh, but with this assignment, you're going to be using my liquid watercolors. So I poured these into these containers, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate with today. Um, all art materials have two ingredients. It has what it's made of, and it ha and that's like crayons. What are crayons made out of? Oh, like wax. Wax. Okay, so crayons are made of, out of wax, and pigment, and pigment gives it its what? Color. Color. Thank you. It's color. Do you know where we find color? Where, where we get our pigments from? Yeah. Where, where did the food coloring get the pigments from? Where do we find? Uh, Okay, plants. That's a really good answer. We got like uh, blueberries and, and raspberries will stain your fingers. My table in my dining room is stained with walnut stain. So yes, plants will give us some pigments. Where else? What? <laughs> but Hobby Lobby had to get them somewhere. You know, we find pigments in the earth. This is a big book of elements. Every single element that exists in our universe is in this book. And like for example, we get red from a metallic element called mercury. Mercury! Okay, anyway, this somehow is extracted and this pigment in vermilion paint is mercury sulfide and there's all kinds of other examples in here like chromium is another metallic element and it will give us chromium oxide green that's a common pigment in paints and glazes and colors for glass and stuff like that so that's where we get our colors we get them from the earth now temper paints are made from something are made from mm -hmm. eggs. Eggs. Egg yolks. egg yolks. If you've ever made scrambled eggs, then you know what a great stickability eggs have. So sometimes these are called egg tempers. <clears throat> okay, now uh, for this painting project, you're going to need a mixing tray, you're going to need a paintbrush, some water, and always a paper towel. So I'm going to get set up with that right now. You guys are going to have access to these, okay? There are 20 of them. Everybody can have their own. Hang on just a minute. You guys are talking, and I need you all not to, okay? I, first of all, I'm filming this for other classes. Can you have a seat, please? Thank you. Okay, so you need a brush, a paint tray, and I've got 10 of these containers. That means that every table can have two of these. And you're going to fill it up a couple of inches, but that's all. Okay? Do not fill this thing full. And you want a paper towel. Always. Always a paper towel. Okay. I'm only putting out for you all to use red, yellow, blue, and white. I'm going to put this black one up for right now. You're, this is your mixing tray.
and uh, you're gonna put your paints on here. A little paint goes a long way, and I like to start with my lightest color first. So on your paint tray, you're gonna decide, what am I painting first? You're not going to put all of the paints out on your paint tray at first. You're gonna do it as you use them. Because one thing I don't want are these paints going down that drain, okay? I do not want to waste paint. So you're gonna use the paint as you need it. So you're gonna have to think to yourself, okay, I am going to paint the tail of my fish first, and I want it to be, let's say, pink. Then on your paint tray, you would only be putting white and red because you're making pink first. As a matter of fact, I think that's what I will do. I will mix a pink. Okay. So I'm gonna open this up. I bought these for, for the younger kids and they had little holes in them so it doesn't spill. Yeah. If you want to take this lid off, that's fine, but you're gonna have to use your fingers, your thumbs, and hold it back here at the same time and push up really hard and then this comes off. If you don't mind, the hole and you can just dip in there that's fine okay okay so there's that and i'm gonna open the red because i'm making a pink you're gonna be mixing a lot of colors you are not allowed to just paint your entire painting the straight red from here and the straight blue from here and the straight yellow from there i'm not going to allow that you're going to have to be mixing your secondary colors too and this is a color wheel and here's primaries. This is what I'm putting on your paint container. I mean, on your tray. So you're going to have to mix your oranges. And you do that with, of course, the primaries. So, and this is laid out in a circle. But the color of the rainbow in order is <coughs> Roy G. Bib. And, yeah, red. It's red. Orange, yellow, green, blue. but indigo is really just blue violet so your primary colors excuse me i'm still squeaking from the bronchitis anyway your primary colors you're going to mix them in different proportions to get your secondary colors but there's a third kind of color and those are called tertiary everybody practice that word tertiary, tertiary. tertiary. those are my favorite colors so if you're going to mix a, a yellow green you're gonna start with yellow and just add a little tiny bit of blue to it to make a yellow green. That a yellow green would fit here on the color wheel, and that would be a tertiary color. This tertiary color here would be blue green. This one would be blue violet. This one would be red violet. This one would be red orange. Red yellow. Yellow orange. Yellow orange right here. Okay, so. You're gonna be mixing all secondaries and tertiaries. Okay. I would like for you to stay after class, okay? To have a conversation with me. Thank you. All right, so where was I? Yes. Okay, now let's talk about the brush. And then I'm gonna do some paint mixing for you. The brush has three parts. This is the brush. This is called the barrel. And this is the handle. When you use the brush, I only want to see paint on the brush part. Do not dip your brush in so far into the paint that you get paint on the barrel because it won't wash off very easily. Okay, and my number one rule is if you get a new color, you have to have a clean brush. Brushes, all the hair in a brush can be made from just about anything. This is a synthetic brush. It's made from plastics. This one is called a talclon. It's kind of like a nylon. But I do have brushes in my classroom that come from natural hair, real hair. And so, so some of your stiffer bristle brushes, yeah, you can tell that this is hair because you see those striations. Okay. I know these are big, but the striations here will tell you that, yes, this is an animal. And some. A uh, coarse animal hair would be like badger. Horse, has anybody ever felt the mane or the tail of a horse? So those are stiff, those make stiffer bristle brushes. This brush that we're gonna use is perfect for this assignment. I'm just gonna put these aside and now let's do the color mixing. So you're only allowed to put a couple of brushfuls of paint on your paint tray at one time. If you run out, you can always get more, but if you put too much 
paint on your paint tray, I'm gonna make you take it and scoop it and put it back in the container. And we want to avoid that because my number one, uh, number two, number three rule, and I, these are all important to me, no paint down that drain if you can help it. So I'm gonna take my white. I always like to start with my lightest color. Make sure your brush is clean, however. So start always by just making sure you have a clean brush and avoid doing this number. I don't wanna hear that because that just means splashing and you're gonna get other people's paintings wet and your surface area wet. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse this out. You can do it very gently, but no splashing and take your paper towel, please, and dry this off. All right, now I'm ready to pick up my first brush full and I'm gonna put it on my paint tray and I like to twist the brush as I put it down. And I think I'm gonna put three brush pulls down, okay? And you will be surprised at how much surface area even just this small amount of paint will cover. Okay, I'm ready to get my red out. This has to be cleaned. You have to clean it. And when I clean my brush, I flick the bristles back and forth really quickly on the bottom like this. Don't shove it down and splay the bristles because if you do that, it will, it will damage the brush and it will get a little knot right up inside there and then the bristles will stay like this the whole time. So we want to be gentle with the brush. And if there's any paint on the barrel, you've got to wipe it off. Okay, so that's why we have paper towels. So now the red, I'm gonna grab a, a brushful and put it down on here, and I'm only gonna get two brushfuls of this. Okay, now I'm gonna teach you how to mix a tint because I have a, a mixing rule. You always put the darker color into the lighter color. You can't do it the other way because it there's no pigment in white, but there's tons in red. So you're gonna take the tons of pigment and you're gonna put it where there's not much pigment and you're gonna do it in tiny, tiny little increments. So I am gonna wash my brush out because if I'm gonna make a really light tint, this red that's already in my brush is gonna overpower the white so fast that you won't be able to control it anymore and it's gonna turn out into the color of like say Pepto-Bismol if you've ever seen that and know what I'm talking about. I've gotta wash this off. So I'm going to Rinse it off. I'm gonna dry it off a little bit. And now I can control this. I'm gonna take just a little tiny bit of red and I'm going to mix it into my white. Look how fast even that small amount of red will overpower your color, your white. Now, anytime you mix two colors together, sometimes it gets a little bit thick or sticky. You don't want to paint with really thick or sticky paint, you want it nice, smooth and creamy. So what you need to do is you can dip this into your water just on the tip there, get a little bit of water and that will loosen your paint up and it becomes nice and it'll flow. Too much water and it becomes transparent and it will start to look like um, watercolor paints. Okay, so now I've got this color and I'm gonna, when you paint, I want you to paint so it's like you're petting a kitty cat. You paint a kitty cat. And there's my first tint, okay. So stay in the lines. When you start to run out of paint, some people will keep trying to paint and there's no paint in the paintbrush. This is actually called a dry brush technique and it's for texture and that kind of, Technique is used after you've painted like a background and then you can maybe do that on top, but yeah, we're just painting background areas. Okay, I am ready to make a darker tint. So I'm gonna get a little bit more red and throw it in here and then my tint becomes darker. And I will paint another section with that darker tint. Staying in the lines, that's a little bit darker. I'm gonna show you just straight up red. So I'm gonna wash my brush out, dry it, dry it a little bit and pick up just straight up red. So if you pull the color out onto your plate, 
and it's really thick. Your solution is a little bit of water until you get it to where it needs to be. All right, so this is just straight up red. And I like to pull my brush towards me when I paint, so sometimes I'll have to turn the paper around okay, so to get it at an angle that you want. Okay. That's straight up red. I'm gonna throw in, I'm gonna make a violet because I'm gonna show, violet gets really dark because the blue is so dark. I'm gonna pop that off. Rinse my, anytime you want new color, front, you've got, you've got to have a clean brush. If you put a dirty brush into here, that's going to be a huge no-no and I'm going to have to take the project away from you and you can finish out in crayons because I, because these have to stay good for everybody. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue and put it on my paint tray. Once your paints are on your paint tray, I don't care if your brush is dirty, if you pick up something new. But if you get new paint out of any of these containers, make sure you've got a clean brush. Okay, I've got a lot of blue in my brush right now, but I don't care. I'm gonna just put it right into this uh, red. And in terms of darkness, red and blue are about even, but this is starting to make a purple. If you wanna lighten the purple, if you wanna make a tint out of that, you're gonna throw it over here into the white. And here's a sort of a grapish color, okay? And so, if you add white to a color, it lightens it up. Or if you add the color to white, I should say. Okay. And then here are some, this is an interesting violet. This is actually a blue violet. I'll show it to you. It's on the blue side. But I do love a red violet, so I'm going to make a red violet. I'm going to rinse my brush off because I see my red violet, and that's just what I want to use. I'm going to put just a little bit more red in here. So in this way, you all will become expert color mixers. And I've already painted quite a few shapes. And here's my red violet. And see how different it is from the blue violet? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, there's my red violet. And already I've painted a lot of different areas. And I still have a lot of paint left. So only put let me remind you only put on your paint tray what you're actually going to be using right then you do not have to put a pile of yellow pile of blue pile of red pile of a white you're just going to start out slow because chances are you won't even get to this over here if you put it on okay to clean up clean up is really easy i want to reuse these so i'm going to show you how to clean this but the table tasks are easy. I want you to pop all these back on. This one is a little bit more difficult because it really, you'll have to hear a snap. There we go. There's the snap. And I'm going to put this up here. It'll do this one too. Okay. Um, there we go. That one's done. You can wash your brush right here at your table. You don't have to wash it off at the sink. Um, even if your water's dirty, it's still gonna be okay to clean your brush off in. I would not say that if this were acrylic paint. Acrylic dries hard like plastic, but this is water soluble. So even if you get some molecules of paint in here, it's not gonna matter with tempera. It's different with latex or acrylic, but anyway, and you can dry it off. And of course, these get put up with the brush part pointing to the ceiling and this water does not, you don't need to clean your water dish out. All you do is dump the water in the sink, stack this, put your brush pointing to the ceiling right here where all the other brushes are. And of course you're gonna take your paint, your paints on the blue tray back and you're gonna put them down where your table is. These are numbered. This is table five right here, and it goes four, three, two, one. All right, I will have a sponge in the sink, and what you're going to do is you're going to let the water roll over this, but you're not going to make the water do the work. You have to use your hand and go scrub, 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 scrub. <laughs> and it's that fast. So I'm going to let the water run over this, and I'm going to scrub, 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 scrub. And do this as quickly as you can because you're going to have a lot of traffic 
here at this sink, and then that's clean enough and just stack it upside down right here at the sink, okay? And make sure that your table's cleaned off. And that's it. All right, you can stop filming. Thank you so much for